all right, motherfucker. <laughs> this is not how I wanted to come up with material. I am tired of being spurred on to ideas by someone dying. A hearty fuck you to you and the horse you rode in on, if I may say so. So, there's this term I recently learned in the self-help universe, under being. It's about making yourself smaller, less judgeable, harder to see. I immediately resonated with this phrase as wherever I happen to be in my ongoing cycle of broke or doing well financially, consistently, I feel I am the queen of the underbeers. The only person more extreme than me in both ends of this spectrum was my high school nemesis and later Facebook insomniac friend, Hiroto. Hiro, for short. My test scores had been, may I say, phenomenal. All the national merits and such, my GPA, on the other hand, not great. Uh, my deeply competitive high school <laughs> was uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, huge. My graduating class was 800 and something, what am I doing wrong? Thank you, uh, <laughs> was uh, 800 and something. I was 320 something in that class. Famously in our circles, Hero, on the other hand, took five of the AP classes for college credit taking none of the courses that go with and, <laughs> and got a five, the highest possible score on all of them. In my under overachieving, it paled by comparison and I was jealous. It's a lot on my mind lately. On Easter Sunday, of all things, the king of the under beers, hero, died in his nursing home, age 57. Long live the king. The thing is, I've been in a swivet about my reunion. I've been on the fence about it, and the fence posts, they have been uncomfortable, spiky. I did not go to my 10th. At that time, high school was mostly memories of an unpleasant kind how I'd messed up, how I'd wished I'd gone to the Fancy Pants Arts High School, which had just opened, but was not yet accredited, so my parents would not allow, or gone on a junior year abroad, only my French was really, really bad, and my parents worried I'd be ex-murdered by a hush moutrier <laughs> hero would know. I fortunately, have a conflict. So didn't even have to wonder what to say as I am otherwise engaged. I did go to the 20, but by then I was, to my own surprise, a business consultant. So I thought it would be funny, a lark. My high school best friend was then eight plus months pregnant, had my goddaughter just a few weeks later, but she wanted to go. And with her big news, I could figuratively and literally hide behind her if things got too wacky. So after years of sniping and circling around each other, here we all are at a Maggiano's <laughs> banquet room <laughs> at a time of smoking areas still being allowed at a gathering. He is in a circle of dudes, literally now all lawyers, he, at that point, a taxi dispatcher. Uh, as always, towering over them in all senses of that, I enter the circle of leather elbow patches and say hi. <laughs> Bourbon on the rocks is bought for me. I'd recently finished five years of bartending. I'd been going to therapy, set acting aside on the way to my current odd consulting job. I can now confidently speak both tweed jacket and taxi cab in my cute new cocktail dress and heels and hard-earned ability to know my brown liquors, I have, in some way, arrived. We become Facebook friends. 
It is the perfect bantering medium for us. We are the night shift, tossing the ball back and forth across our friends' pages. But bit by bit, he's repeatedly in the hospital and then a series of rehab places, divorced. Things are clearly not great for him. And he deflects any direct questions about it, with me anyway. Goodness, I do seem to have just a soup song of rage. Anyway, the 30th. I did go to that one. My dad had died the previous fall, and my brother and I were meeting up anyway to scatter his ashes in Lake Michigan, as we'd done with our mom, and all the wrapping up that goes with that, plus another funeral, a wedding, the whole circle of life. So just the tiniest bit stressed out and not caring so much as usual what people would think. This time, at a weirdly loud sports bar. <laughs> I'd been looking forward to catching up once again with Hero, but he at that point is home in Ohio with his then wife and two small children. Instead, a kid I'd known just slightly since junior high did the thing of many revenge movie plots through the ages from a short science nerd with a bull haircut and thick glasses, he emerges at the event to be stunning. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth has also moved to California, become a successful engineer of some kind, is buff, literally a surfer, with subtle blonde highlights, no glasses, casually stylish, bemused. Fortunately, we're all wearing name tags with a small black and white image of our senior year photo in the corner. People literally pulling over the planning committee to talk about him, get up the courage to flirt, men and women alike. We chat, share living in SoCal stories a bit. He leans over, confides loudly over the 80s dance track music, you look great. Is it California? Why do we both look so much younger than at most everybody. I'm a bit flustered remembering the kind, short nerd and speaking to this tall, handsome dude at the same time. You didn't have any kids either, right? I, I think that's the dues that they pay, you know, the trade-off? <laughs> But he is still smart and insightful. I also am different. Not as dramatically as he, but there has been in the late 40s a renaissance. I'd broken up with the boyfriend too awkward to go to that 20th at the Maggiano's with me, gone freelance in my weird consulting work successfully, moved and applied to grad school in playwriting unsuccessfully, but still made a plan and actually saw it through. Things, though not perfect, were trending well. I had money in the bank, friends, a new love of animal rescue, cute haircuts, a life of my own devising, mostly. Now, here we go again, again. I hate to say it, to face it, but maybe it's not about the drama, after all. Reborn up from the ashes, whipping off the glasses, and my heavens, you're beautiful. My big movie reveal was supposed to have happened by now, surely? I mean, the arc between 18 and 38 had been more of a wobbly line. Uh, between eight, uh, 38 and 40, more of what I'd imagined for myself, linear, a goal, some setbacks, but I was in it, and now, this bit has just felt sad, unaccomplished, under bin. But you know, I never did have kids, so I've only been on one side of this metaphor. Splat! Misshapen head and covered in goo and crying, or slapped on the ass until you are. Maybe this last 10 years has been more like that, both the laborer and the labor -y. I've just been too in it to see it, but slowly, through the goo, 
a vision does seem to be emerging. Here we are. There's no great story to it, just life, getting through it, plugging along. Real-time update. Reunion was Saturday. I did not go. In the end, I decided, sure, I couldn't really afford it. But more to the point, I didn't have to go to prove I'm OK, to prove my choices are not too mortifying. <laughs> Friends are posting pics at the whole weekend saying how much I was missed. And lots of others didn't make it. And I'm not judging them about it. I'll message Kenneth over in Carlsbad, see if he went, and what he thought about it all, since Hero, irritatingly, is not here to ask. I'd love to end with some kind of, if not now, when is now? Tidy little wrap up. But we under beers know that it doesn't work that way, not for us. So instead, and meanwhile, a toast to Hero and all of our friends, whatever state of being we may find ourselves in today. Ask backwards into the future. Can you keep it going for VAMP first-timer, Joan Afton. Joan, among many things, is a user experience research consultant, animal rescuer, and now a storyteller. Give it up for being a storyteller. Her solo show, 30JJ or Bust, The World is Your Underwire, appeared at the Hollywood, Santa Monica, and Chicago Fringe Festivals. One more time for Joan.